guys, so apologies that this reading wasn't out yesterday, but uh, luckily uh, we're going to get it today and you know me, I will catch up, um, so we'll we'll get there and we're definitely, definitely going to get through Acts because uh, we're nearly at the end. Uh, so I'm going to read for you, we're going to reflect upon that scripture and then we're going to pray together. Okay guys, so this is our penultimate uh, chapter in Acts number 27. I'm reading it from the International Children's Bible. So let's, uh, let's hear this. It was decided that we would sail for Italy. An officer named Julius, who served in the emperor's army, guarded Paul and some of the other prisoners. We got on a ship and left. The ship was from the city of Adramantium and was about to sail to different points in Asia. Aristarchus, a man from the city um, of Thessalonica in Macedonia, went with us. The next day, we came to Sidon, Julius, who was very good to Paul, and he gave Paul the freedom to go and visit his friends who took care of his needs. We left Sidon and sailed close to the city uh, and the island of Cyprus because the wind was blowing against us. We went across the sea by Cilicia and Pamphylia, and then we came to the city of Myra in Lycia. There, the officer found a ship from Alexandria that was going to Italy, so he put us on it. We sailed slowly for many days. We had a hard time reaching Snidis because the wind was blowing far against us. We could not go any further that way, so we sailed by the South Sea of the island of Crete, near Salmon. We sailed along the coast, but the sailing was hard. Then we came to a place called Safe Harbours, near the city of Lycie. But we had lost much time. It was now dangerous to sail, because it was already after the day of cleansing, so Paul warned them. Men, I can see that there will be lots of trouble on this trip. The ship and the things in the ship will be lost. Even our lives may be lost. But the captain and the owner of the ship did not agree with Paul. So the officer did not believe Paul. Instead, the officer believed the captain of the ship. And, the, and the, what the owner of the ship said. And that harbour was not a good place for the ship to stay for winter. So most of the men decided that the ship should leave. The men hoped that we could go to Phoenix. The ship could stay there for the winter. Phoenix was a city on the island of Crete. It had a harbour which faced uh, southwest and northwest. Then a good wind began to blow from the south. The men on the ship thought, this is the wind we wanted and now we have it. So they pulled up the anchor. We sailed very close to the island of Crete. But then a very strong wind named the Northeaster came up from the island. This wind took the ship and carried it away. The ship could not sail against it. So we stopped trying and we let the wind blow us. We went below a small island named Cauda. Then we were able to bring in the lifeboat but it was very hard to do. After the men took the lifeboat in, they tied ropes around the ship to help to hold it together. The men were afraid that the ship would hit the sandbanks of Cytus, so they lowered the sail and let the wind carry the ship. The next day, the storm was blowing us so hard that the men threw out some of the cargo. A day later, they threw out the ship's equipment. For many days, we could not see sun or the stars. The storm was very bad. We lost all hope of staying alive. We thought we would die. The men had gone without food for a long time. Then one day, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, I told you not to leave Crete. You should have listened to me. Then you would not have dealt with all this trouble and loss. But now I tell you, cheer up. None of you will die, but the ship will be lost. Last night, an angel from God uh, came to me. This is the God I worship and I am his. God's angel said, Paul, do not be afraid. You must stand before Caesar and God has given you this promise. He will save the life of all those men sailing with you. So men, be cheerful. I trust God. Everything will happen as his angel told me, but we will crash on an island. 
on the 14th night we, we were floating around in the Adriatic Sea. The sailors thought we were close to land. They threw a rope into the water with a weight on the end of it. They found that the water was 120 feet deep. They went a little farther and threw the rope in again. It was 90 feet deep. The sailors were afraid that we would hit the rocks, so they threw four anchors into the water. They prayed for daylight to come. Some of the sailors wanted to leave the ship. They lowered the lifeboat. These sailors wanted uh, the other men to think that they were throwing more anchors from the ship. But Paul told the officer and the other soldiers, if these men do not stay in your ship, your lives cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes and let the lifeboat fall into the water. Just before dawn, Paul began persuading all the people to eat something. He said, for the past 14 days, you've been waiting and watching. You have not eaten. Now I beg you to eat something. You need it to stay alive. None of you will lose even a hair off your heads. After he said this, Paul took some bread and thanked God for it before all of them. He broke it off a piece and began eating. All the men felt better. They all started eating too. There were 276 people on the ship. We ate all we wanted. Then we began making the ship lighter by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, the sailors saw land. They did not know what land it was, but they saw a bay with a beach. They wanted to sail that ship to the beach if they could. So they cut the ropes to the anchors and left the anchors in the sea. At the same time, they untied the ropes that they were holding the rudders. They raised the front sail into the wind and sailed towards the beach. But the ship hit a sandbank. The front of the ship stuck there and could not move. Then big waves began to break the back of the ship to pieces. The soldiers decided to kill the prisoners so that none of them could swim away and escape. But Julius, the officer, wanted to let Paul live. He did not allow the soldiers to kill the prisoners. Instead, he ordered everyone who could swim to jump into the water and swim to land. The rest used wooden boat boards or pieces of the ship. And this is how all the people made it safely to land. This is actually a very exciting uh, chapter in Acts, and it might be one that you're not particularly familiar with. I don't believe that it gets used in the lectionary um, on a particular Sunday. I certainly don't think I've heard anybody preach on this chapter. But then, I mean, I've not been to every church service. Perhaps you've heard one um, preaching on, on Paul's journey. It's, I mean... I can't understand Paul keeping his cool when for 14 days, for two weeks, they are having this nightmare of a trip. And uh, what we need to remember is like if we if we think about Jewish um, sort of scripture and the, the water, uh, Jews don't do boats. We don't have boating stories. You know, we've got Noah's Ark, but um, that's actually ancient Near Eastern, the flood narrative. And so it's, it's not uh, like primarily Jewish because they're not a seafaring people. In fact, um, that's the reason that, that like the water is used to represent chaos and disorder because you cannot tame the waves. You can't predict what's going to happen. Uh, although Paul does manage to predict that uh, if we sail now, this is going to end badly. And that's kind of what I'd like to pick up upon, is that they're warned, aren't they? Do this and it's not it's not going to be a, a good outcome. And yet they are all saved and they are all safe. And though I'm not saying that this um, is a primary theme in the passage, it did strike me as that the, the grace of God, basically, is that Sometimes um, we do things that have nightmarish consequences and that, you know, I mean, because basically all of them could have lost their lives easily. That boat could have gone and they could all have been dead. It, you know, it, that's the disaster that could have happened and maybe, you know, was the more likely. But you feel like that God's providence is that's the angel. God's God's actually got his heart, um, like uh, um, an eye on them and a stake in what's what's happening and though potentially their actions were deserving not say deserving but um were foolhardy um that god like preserves their lives and i really 
<laughs> it's really important to, to understand, I think, that the mercy of God and that actually um, God, it, it, actions aren't necessarily paid out. It's not like, well, you didn't listen to me and therefore, uh, you know, God's going to do all this 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 frightening stuff but actually that in most of the bible the narratives are that people do really stupid stuff and god's like oh how do i get you out of this situation and i think there's something wonderful about that because we do stupid stuff in our lives and there's no stupid stuff that you can ever do that's going to make god not care about your life and wanting to preserve it and wanting the best uh, for you because that's um what god is like and I think that is a truly wonderful thing. Let's uh, finish with a word of prayer. God, you care about the entirety of your creation. You care about us, whatever choices we make in life. Lord God, may we keep fixed in our hearts uh, that your love endures all things. That your love goes beyond all things. And may we, like you, have similar love for others that does not end when people make questionable decisions or ignore our advice or ignore the advice of governments or people in authority or figures that maybe should be listened to. Let us not, therefore, lose that care and love for people's futures, for people's uh, well-being. But instead, may it be... Um, beyond all things, that whatever testing um, comes uh, our way, may we continue to love our fellow humans with a, a, a just a boundless, deep love so that we can work and pray and endeavour for the well-being of all those people that we come into contact with, uh, whether we agree with what they do or whether we don't. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.